Welcome to class. Today we are going to talk about English in India. In this discussion, we will survey the journey of English in India right from you know entering this subcontinent as the language of traders and merchants to becoming the language of powerful colonizers and finally language of the common indian and penetrating deeply in all walks of our life so this journey of english is phenomenal and we are going to survey this journey today in this talk so uh, the journey of english from entering indian subcontinent as a foreign language to becoming the second language to most of the educated indian in almost four centuries is extraordinary and post 1991 when india opened its frontier to global order and when we adopted the liberal policies in trade and commerce allowed multinationals to settle in india and indian borders were opened it ushered so this this uh, globalization process of globalization ushered a new era of liberalization in indian economy which further extended the outreach and deepened the penetration of the language to almost all corners of the country across all class across all regions english negotiated with all other indian languages and settled in the ecology of linguistic ecology of india uh english has played a very significant role at various levels of modernization process and has consequently become instrumental in restructuring our identities in the distinctive uh, post modern world and we'll shortly understand what i mean by that english occupies a very significant space in the multilingual ecology of india and offers economic social and political advantage to its speaker in ling linguistically diverse country uh it enjoys supremacy a high prestige value and uh, no linguistic tension with any of the indian languages the reasons may be attributed to our colonial history but the fact is that english has negotiated with other indian languages interacted with other indian languages and penetrated so deep that it enjoys primacy and it doesn't stand in opposition to any of the languages of india and we as an indian have accepted english as the language of upward social mobility and this is what makes the roots of english in india deeper uh in the first half of 19th century it witnessed a consolidation of political power and socio economic control of english as it gradually replaced persian as language of administration trade and education if you look at the pre british india persian was the court language and before that of course sanskrit and other indian languages but persian replaced all those languages in court in administration in governance and when britishers came in the in the middle of 19th century right we see a great shift 
and uh, tightening grip of company british company east india company on indian territories and uh, you know uh, continuing acquiring different princely states controlling different princely states and these merchants and the british traders turn into this company turns into a political force a colonial force occupies a major vast majority of the land of india and we all remember 1830s how english was introduced to education indian education system and uh, the arrogant entries of lord macaulay of 1835 how he looks at the the indian linguistic trajectory and how he superimposes english on it there were so many demeaning and uh, arrogant entries in the minutes of macaulay but one was very powerful and widely quoted to understand the intent and the plan of uh, that commission right uh, so he says on 2nd february 1835 Second February, eighteen thirty-five, he released the minutes, popularly known as Macaulay minutes, and he states the intent of the whole exercise of introducing English to Indian education system, overall changing the Indian education system, and making it more European-like system. i quote from there he says we must at present do our best to form a class who may be interpreters between us and the millions whom we govern there was a there was a discussion that uh, in 1823 when in english was you know introduced in the in the education system we had so many vernacular schools madrasas and what they call hindu centers of learning and uh, they wanted to make it english centers of learning and uh, there was a question the population size was so big and resources were so limited but macaulay's arrogant entries and macaulay's claims in the minutes showed the deep seated intent of the colonizers in introducing english and you know you know making indian education system uh, like european education system so we say that we cannot teach everyone english is given such a huge population so what we can do we can teach some of them and then leave the millions on the mercy of these people who will be in indian in blood and flesh and you know british in test morality and principles so what is said we must at present do our best to form a class who may be interpreters between us and millions whom we govern a class of persons indian in blood and color but english in test in opinions in morals and in intellect so this class will work as an intermediary class which will connect us as rulers and millions of indians as our subjects whom we govern this was the intent and this talks about the intent of uh, british raj in implementing english curriculum and uh, you know english system of learning in early education higher education and overall replacing the indian indigenous education system and this is how english enters into the formal domain of education and training macaulay's words stand true to their their uh, 
intent uh, partially as it did create a class of Indians who looked like Indians in blood and flesh. However, in due course of time, this class maintained Indianness in their taste and in their opinions, morals, and intellect. So now we have educated elite Indian class, which is very fluent in English and enjoys socio political supremacy. Today, English enjoys constitutional protection, executive functionality, educational promotion, social approval, and instrumental in capturing cultural imagination in India. And for the last 200 years, English has been negotiating with Indian languages with its conflicting togetherness. So interestingly, language of colonizers become language of the mass and post-independence. We continue in English, accepting English as a link language, as a lingua franca, pan-India across all uh, nooks and no, all, all, all over India as a link language to communicate. This language marks our, uh, you know, desperate desire to move upward in social hierarchy. This language plays a role of instrument, becomes instrumentary for us in, you know, climbing the ladders of so social mobility. And it happens because in English in India with other languages stands in an opposition or parad paradoxical domain relation and their mixing has resulted into reconciliation of the two domains. Tej Bhatia writes in 2014. If you look at the English in the policy framework, language policy framework of the country, uh, you should watch the video that we did on uh, official languages of India that talks in detail about all these things, how English became sec uh, associate official language. Uh, but just to bring that perspective here to understand, we all understand that Hindi was adopted as uh, official language by the constituent assembly and uh, on 26 January 1950, we adopted Hindi as our official language, not national language. We have to be very clear about it. Uh, so, a window period of 15 years was given to Hindi uh, to replace English completely. And it was resolved that English will continue as long as it is needed. But as the time nearing, the 15 years in window period was nearing, we see a violent protest specifically in, in Madras presidency, erstwhile Madras presidency, presidency and spreading over all non-Hindi speaking states to compete with Hindi and they looked at Hindi as a hegemonic spread and we see anti-Hindi protests in non-Hindi speaking states led by Madras presidency. And then uh, before 1965, the period that was you know, designed for Hindi to replace English completely as official language, the Official Language Act 1963 as it was amended on in 1967, Act number 19 of 1963 on 10th May. 1963 states an act to provide for the language which may be used for the official purpose of the union for transaction of business in parliament for central and state acts and for certain purposes in high courts be it enacted by parliament in the 14th year of republic of india as follows and it says continuance of english language for official purpose for the union and for use in parliament not withstanding the expiration of the period of 15 years 
from the commencement of the constitution that is 1950 26 january the english language may as from the option uh, appointed date continue to be used in addition to hindi for all the official purposes of the union for which it was being used immediately before that day and for the transaction of business in parliament so this act enables english to continue sine die as associate official language so english gets a constitutional protection and constitutional promotion and it deepened and consolidated the roots further now if you look at journey of english in india uh, though it is started as the language of traders and merchants 1823 is very important and why it is important it is important because english education was introduced in india with two objectives number one to popularize European culture and science among the Indian mass and to consolidate the position of British Raj in India. So, with these two objectives, English education system was introduced to India in 1823 and this is how the formal introduction of English began. In 1835, we all know the Macaulay's minutes. English was formally introduced as a medium of instruction, and Macaulay's famous minutes set out the aim of this move. Right? And you understand the aim of the move that we talked about that to form a class of people who may be interpreters between us and the millions we govern, and a class which is Indian in blood and color, but English in taste, in, in opinions, in morals and in intellect. Moving on, 1857 was another remarkable year when three universities modeled on European model were established in three metropolitan cities. One in Madras, erstwhile Madras, now Chennai, one in erstwhile Bombay, now Mumbai, and one in erstwhile Calcutta, now Kolkata. So, these three you know, modern universities were, were is, you know, established uh, in three different cities. In 1869, Lord Napier was invited as the chief guest to deliver a convocation address at Madras University, newly established Madras University, and his convocation address spelled out the objectives of European education in India. And if you look at these objectives, they look very uh, well intended. But we know the political and ideological implications of it. Uh, the first objective was to give a new basis for national unity. Look at this European mindset of our colonizers could not understand the multilingual, multicultural, plural, social way of Indian societies, social way of living. They could not see that India has survived with all these languages through centuries. So, multilingualism is a norm, not an exception. But they believe that in order to have a national you know, uh, integration and unity, we need to have one language. And they saw English that may fulfill this need given the linguistic diversity of the country. 
So, the first intent was to give a new basis for national unity. Number two, to give a better knowledge of India. And if you recall the Macaulay's opinion about it, he said that you know the total uh, trajectory of knowledge of Arabia and India. Arabia means the Persian he was referring to, and India is Sanskrit he was referring to. Is equal to one shelf of book in English. So this is how we saw the knowledge trajectory and education system of India. And uh, this 19, uh, 1835 in a commission report believed so deeply in this idea that they discarded the indigenous trajectory of knowledge and believed that India can be enlightened through the European knowledge system. Uh, then you should read self government uh, governance governance in courts because you know he said to enable self governance that means if they believe that english will educate and make the indian population mature enough to take decisions on their own and no other language is capable of doing so and the fourth objective And the fourth ob objective, it states that European model of education will enable common Indians to participate in general intellectual movement of the world. So they saw English and European model of education as, uh, an, as an instrument, as a tool to enlighten and empower Indian. This is what Lord Napier outlines in his convocation address at Madras University. And that spells out the intent of the whole endeavor. In 1947, we received freedom. And the free and independent India chose English to continue as long as it was needed right so there was no compulsion of doing so but because of certain political developments and uh, certain ideological conflicts and perceptions english continued even after we got independence in 1947 so the free and independent sovereign india willfully chooses english to continue as long as it was felt needed and this is the history because we all know how this official language uh, decision was taken how hindi was voted as official language of the union and how english was adopted as associate official language of india in 1948 the radha christian commission was uh, you know, constituted, which was Free India's first education commission, and it was also known as University Education Commission. It recommended that English should continue to be studied in high schools and universities. So we, we English gets a lot of promotions <coughs> and support, institutional support, not only in British India, but also post independence. Radha Krishnan Committee Commission or uh, University Education Commission, the other name is University Education Commission, recommends English to continue. Uh, as uh, in, at the level of high schools and higher education at university level. In 1958, the Central Institute of English, CIE, 
which later became C I E C I E F L. Right? Uh, sentence sheet of English as foreign language. And now, as we are talking in 2021, it has turned into IFLO, English and Foreign Language University. It was set up in 1958. The objectives of this new institution, which was set up, were to train teachers of English to produce teaching material and to improve the standards of English teaching in India. In 1961, the Prime Minister Nehru, in 1961, Prime Minister Nehru pointed out the need for a linked language. He said, the tendency of the regional language to become the medium for university education, though desirable in many ways, may well lead to isolation of such universities from the rest of India. Unless there is a linked language, then there is a link in the shape of an all India language. And the implied intent was English as a link in the shape of all India link language. In 1963, the Regional Institute of English was set up in Bangalore. 1967, a group report on the study of English in India was prepared by Ministry of Education, Government of India. And the aim was to survey the nature of study of English in India. So, if you see, we have just reached up to 1963. Something that is started in 1823 for introducing English in education system, promoting English in education system, continues till 1963. So far, we have uh, you know, traced. So, it was not only British Raj which consolidated the position of English, but also post-independent India, uh, guided by multiple linguistic, political and ideological compulsions, continued with English and year after year, it was consolidated further. Then, 1964, we all understand the Kothari Commission which is a very significant commission, apart from other British time commissions, 1964 Kothari Commission is equally significant and important in the education system of India. The initiative that started in 1823, formally established in 1835, and through different commissions and committees got Consolidated continues in 1964 with Kothari Commission. Kothari Commission was for, formed on 14 July 1964 and it submitted its report on 29 June 1966. Regarding languages, Kothari Commission recommended adopting a three language formula at state levels. And just to remind you, that education in independent India is a matter of state, not the union of states, not center, but the state. It intended to promote Hindi, English, and a regional language in non Hindi speaking states. The Gothari Commission recommended promoting regional languages, Sanskrit, as well as international languages, uh, preferably English. So, even in 1964, Kothari Commission report, which was submitted in 1966, we find uh, the policy framework that does not rule out English. It further consolidates its position in education, early education, middle, middle level education, and higher education. And what is this three language formula? For three language formula or trilingual formula, 
please watch the video that we did on three language formula for details however i'll just give you a brief idea about this three language formula uh commission field felt that you know there was no uniform system of education in in the country and uh, we had you know multiplicity of languages and the claims of the speakers which acted as hindrance or barriers in arriving at a single uniform policy of education across india and three language formula was seen as a mediating uh, mechanism to work out this linguistic tension in this multicultural and diverse multilingual india so it's, it it says whereas hindi was the general medium of, inst of instruction in the north regional languages and english were the media of instructions in other parts and it led to chaos and therefore in order to uniform uh, uniformize the system in 1968 the new education policy was announced formulated and announced and it adopted the trilingual formula as suggested by the hari commission and what was it in hindi speaking states the formula translated into learning hindi english and a modern indian language is preferably a south indian language language from southern states for the students of non hindi speaking states this formula mandated lessons in hindi english and regional language so even in this formula followed by national education policy on education in 1968 english occupies a central position in our education system interestingly in 1968 uh, and in, in 1986 the another education policy was formulated and announced but like 1968 the npe national policy on education 1986 also adopted three language formula verbatim and it, it, it resolved to implement the provisions of this formula as adopted in 1968 in letters and spirit so hardly any change no change in 1977 the ugc syllabus reform happened and this was a result of regional and national workshops conducted by the ugc to examine the syllabus of various universities in order to update and improve them in 1987 the curriculum development center was established at hyderabad by the ugc the aim was to shift focus in curriculum designing from teaching to learning and make it need based and socially relevant syllabus so all these exercises initiatives commissions committees what we see english the position of english as a language of instruction and language of content gets consolidated it hardly changes uh, in 2006 the national knowledge commission report was submitted and this commission also emphasized the role of english in, in the indian education system and it recommends english language as a most important determinant of access to higher education the national knowledge commission has proposed for teaching the language from class 1 so even at primary level english was introduced at the primary level which is not done in british period but it was introduced at primary level and a national plan for teaching english as a language in addition to regional language from class 1 this is the main you no know, recommendation pertaining to language and uh, it was believed that at the end of 12 years of schooling by the time you finish your school and get into undergraduate mode every student will be proficient it was believed that it will be proficient 
in at least two languages one home language or regional language the other english and i'm talking about 2006 as we are talking now we have national education policy 2020 and national education policy 2020 does not make any uh, you know major shift in language policy and it maintains three language formula with a little tweak so medium from medium of instruction wherever possible this this policy document says wherever possible the medium of instruction until at least grade 5 but preferably till grade 8 and beyond will be the home language or mother tongue or local language or regional language whichever is applicable may be cases where your mother tongue may not be the language of the local government may be the case that your mother tongue may not be the language of uh, you know the lo local population so we have multi layered identities mother tongue home language local language regional language so that will be the medium, medium of instruction it advocates medium of instruction to be uh, in the home language or mother tongue or the regional language until class 5 and it desires to continue up to the standard 8 class 8 and then it becomes optional the three language formula will continue to be implemented while keeping in mind the need to promote multilingualism as well as promote national unity NEP 2020 also states that there will be a greater flexibility in the three language formula and no language will be implemented on any state. And you can understand the ideological compulsion for announcing this. Otherwise, in practice, no language has been uh, you know, imposed. And Tamil Nadu, for that matter, one of the states in India, has only two language formula. Tamil and English. Uh, the three languages learned by children will be the choices of states because education is a state subject, regions, and of course the students themselves. So long as at least two languages out of the three are native to India, and it still it gives third language to be it, an opted out is English. So, we hardly see any shift in any of these policies and English continues to be in its central position in the entire linguistic ecology of the country of India. And uh, many people have worked on Indian English, Indianness of English, indigenization of English, and the claims about Indian English to be distinct variety of English, not a subverted, perverted variety. Works by Kachru, Braj Kachru, 1978, Rajendra Singh, 2012, Ramakant Agnihotri, 2007, Rakesh Bhatt, and Mr. Rajendra Singh, 2008. And many other works conclude that English in India symbolizes a reflection of modernity, higher social prestige, and believed to be instrumental in upward social mobility. Indian English has now developed as an independent language and certainly not as a deviant form of its original one. And the most important thing about Indian English is that people have accepted it with their opened arms and customize it to capture the socio-cultural imagination. English arrived in this country as a foreign language, now enjoys a local flavor, blended with local flavor, and almost like, you know, native to linguistic ecology of India. It has merged with Indian linguistic fabric 
in so beautiful way that now it has become most preferred second language of all educated Indians and a vast majority of population speaks English, understands English. The competence in, in, in English may vary. We don't have equal competence the way we have in our native language competence, but an average Indian understands English so well and uh, the revolution in IT technology and digital technology has ensured penetration of English by English in Indian uh, ecology even more deeper. We will talk about impact of globalization and IT revolution on English in India in the next video. We will also talk about certain uh, grammatical characteristics of English, Indian English and we will talk about the nature and character of Indian English in our next video. This is it for now. Thank you very much.